commuting from San Diego to Big Bear by way of Toronto, Canada. 15 hours in. How's it going, Bernie? Uh -huh. got up here we played wiffle ball, a little home run derby contest. A wiffle ball, baseball game, competition, a lot of competition. That's one man. Mm -hmm. Right there on that other one right there. Bernal Lund, <laughs> Championship Risk 2010 AD player. Pours over the instructions okay, the to see how he can manipulate the game in his favor. Played Risk. That was great. Played a new Risk game. And I won. shoot guns and we shot a lot. We shot for four hours from shotguns to 30 out six to 40s to 22s. We just shot everything we possibly could. Yes, the fishing was fun. Uh, Pastor, uh, he was smoking. He was smoking this weekend. He had two on the stringer when we still had the stringer. Uh, he had two on the stringer before I even got my pole in the water. He was just smoking, he, he, was, he was well. He won the fishing contest and rightly so. He was so excited about the second fish he caught that he put it on the stringer and threw the stringer in the water. Unfortunately, he did not secure the stringer and we were talking, I was kind of talking a little smack, you know, and I said, well, Pastor, at least you have a couple on the stringer. And when I did, I looked at the stringer and the stringer wasn't there and I said, Pastor, where's the, where's the stringer? And uh, we looked and we saw in the water underneath, we saw the, the, the string just moving away slowly but surely as the fish were swimming away. And uh, I laughed because they weren't my fish. <laughs> So you got a picture of it, right? No, I didn't get a picture. So I, I, I put it on the stringer, I threw see. it in the water. That I go back and I throw a line in it, my, my line in, rebate it, threw it in. And Brother Mike looks at me and goes, Pastor, this he goes, where's the stringer? Oh, you you just by shove it in hard, you know? He wants to do the music? <laughs> All right. No, no, no. No, for That's weird. That's not going in the movie. <laughs> What, what you realize out here, what you, you could probably realize anywhere, but what I realized out here was uh, to be still. I was touched in a way by God that I don't think in many, many years I haven't been touched like that. Friday night especially, I realized uh, my mortality I realized how small and insignificant we are before God, and I realized that um, as men we do have veils and that we hide behind, and we are afraid of intimacy. We're afraid of intimacy with those around us, and we're in afraid of intimacy with, with God. 
And I realized that that was the barrier between me and God in my personal walk with the Lord. Friday night during the message, I've never seen Pastor Chadwick communicate the word like that. Uh, that was not him communicating, that was the Spirit of God through him. And just to see his transparency and his love for uh, God, his love for Canyon Ridge Baptist Church, the men of this church, the families of this church, uh, and quite frankly, it was just overwhelming. Listen, I need people sometimes, and friends of mine, and I have them, Brother Diltz is one of them, that have no problem getting in my face and saying this, what are you doing, you idiot? Walk with God. Uh, one thing I did learn is that when I see problems in my own heart and in my own life, uh, it's not fixable necessarily by a, a one, two, three procedure. Uh, it involves me developing a relationship with God. Sometimes we had individual prayer time, and we, we would go off sometimes with, with two people, two guys, and we had times to pray together and, and to share um, what's been going on in our lives. And I, a couple of times, two, two particular times this weekend, I um, I talked to two individuals and had um, really good bonding experiences, just what's going on in each of our lives. I'm taking God down the mountain. And I don't say that tongue in cheek. I say that because I come up here and I left him. And he came up here and showed me that he wanted him to go with me. And I know he's in my heart, he's in my, he saved me, but uh, I didn't take him with me a lot of the times. I did a lot of things my own strength. And my family needs God, and I need God. And when I get home, uh, I'm taking him with me. And I know it's a, it might be a weird thought, but God really did a work in that area. I think what we did, you could probably sum it up as we grew close to the Lord. We had a lot of fun this year. Being able to just spend time just getting into the Word of God. Listening to, to God and hearing what he wants. I'm taking down the desire that I don't leave what happened up here, up here. We were just in awe, humbled by God, recognized that God is great. I was really challenged to get alone with God more. I hope that more men will come up the following year and just be open and willing to receive something. This was a phenomenal year. The best men's retreat I've ever been to in my life. And we're going to just be open to the Lord again next year and give people a freedom and an opportunity to serve the Lord. And I can't encourage you enough to come and be a part of the men's retreat, get to know other men, get to draw closer to the Lord, get to come away from the environment and the norm and the rat race for a little while and get along with God. It's going to be awesome. 2008 is going to be our best year.